This is in response to Billy's Talking Points memo from Tuesday, November 25th, 2014, uh, a reaction to the uh, Michael Brown grand jury testimony, something like that. Uh, a lot of things are going on, uh, trying to stay completely focused on the subject here, uh, but I think you brought up three, three important things, Billy, or three things that I'm going to try and hopefully remember them all. Uh, number one uh, was you talked about uh, where was the National Guard, and I would agree with that. The governor of, of, of Missouri had plenty of time. He called up the National Guard, I thought, two weeks ago before, the, before it. Uh, we knew that it was going to come any day now, uh, and that uh, even when the day came, we knew by about 12 o'clock that day that, that uh, McCullough was going to make his testimony known at, uh, or his, 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 the findings known at 8 o'clock that night, uh, 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 Missouri time, or whatever time that is. And so, so if he had actually uh, called up the National Guard, there was plenty of time to get them to where they needed to be. Now, how many people he called up, where they were, where they were stationed, how they could be allocated there, I don't know how any of that stuff works, but the assumption would have been that the governor of Missouri, who had called up the National Guard, would have had them in place. Now, the, uh, 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 you know, the, you know, the vice, the vice governor or whatever, <laughs> you know, who you, who you recorded on your show, uh, might have been a Republican, of course, uh, but then, but then he was saying, you know, that, that did, did, did he do this uh, for the uh, Justice Department and Eric Holder and Barack Obama by not putting him out there uh, as a show that uh, we're not going to go too heavy-handed the first night, we're just going to see how it happens, and of course things reacted badly. Uh, I think that you could have had a decent show of force without it being overpowering the whole time and still protect, but I don't, so I'll, I think that it is, that is a good point uh, that all of that can be investigated. Now, having said that, I know that it's very easy for you, Billy, to just go into the fact that these are hoodlums, these are thugs, they are criminals, uh, they need to be uh, um, um, uh, 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 prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law in terms of, in terms of arson, in terms of theft, in terms of destruction of property, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yes, I would agree. I would agree with that. I also have a tiny bit more sympathy in the sense that this is just another case. Again, where Whitey is protecting Whitey, and you know this is how it feels in in that uh, community that the blacks blacks are always being brought down by Whitey, that they continue to have to kowtow to Whitey, Whitey, and Whitey will always be there to protect Whitey. Now you also showed. I, I'm assuming that it is correct that that was Michael Brown's stepfather, where he said burn it down. I don't agree with any of those comments. I can understand the comments uh, in terms of anger, in terms of frustration, uh, possibly some denial that this is the way it was going to be. Uh, possibly there was a tremendous amount of love and respect uh, that the, that the uh, stepfather had for Michael Brown. Very uh, emotional reaction. Again, I don't agree with it, but I do understand how when some of these things happen that there is a very emotional reaction. Uh, I don't know where he was. I don't know if he was right there. I don't know if he incited anyone to do anything. Again, I wouldn't agree with it. I think I understand it. Uh, but th th I think that you were trying to put it into the light that this, hey, look at this. This He's inciting everyone to riot. Now, again, I don't, I don't agree with that. But again, I understand uh, there could be a huge emotional trauma when the, that decision came down that his stepson, who was shot at 12 times, who was hit six times, who was completely unarmed, that this all happened within, within 90 seconds, that the officer who did it would get no charges against them whatsoever. So I can understand that. Okay, now you bring in the next aspect of it, Billy. Uh, you know, saying that this is how our process works, this is how the grand jury works. We have to respect the grand jury. You may not like it, you can make your voices known, uh, but don't be destructive, I understand all that. Uh, um, yes, this is the process that we go through to indict someone. We go through a grand jury process. But, as has been pointed out many times before and many times afterwards, that if McCullough had ever wanted to get an indictment, he could have gotten an indictment in one stinking day. And yet he let it go on for 70 days, 60 days, 70, I don't know, 70 hours of testimony, I don't know. I don't know how that whole thing went down, but he could have gotten an indictment in one day. And Officer Wilson could have gotten his day in court. And then, of course, if McCullough really didn't think that he uh, 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 was guilty and he wasn't guilty, then that would have then, then 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 he would have been proven not guilty for whatever charge he would have had: manslaughter, first degree, whatever, second degree, uh, negligent homicide. 
the, the court, you know, then justice could, you could say that justice was served. But the fact that McCullough did not go into the grand jury, did not, did not go for an indictment, let, let the grand jury make all of the legal decisions themselves, based on all of the evidence, based on a tremendous amount of contradictory evidence, presenting that evidence in there. And, and that has been another thing that has been brought out is that many people who have been on, on the talk shows, mainstream media, et cetera, who have been prosecutors have said, hey, if you want to get an indictment, you get an indictment, you just bring all the things that are pertinent to that indictment. And that just, and, and all the grand jury is occurring, is doing, is concurring to the fact that there are there is enough evidence there that we can bring this to trial with the evidence that is pro bringing this person to trial, not the evidence that says, oh, there's conflicting testimony testimony, et cetera, et cetera. The grand jury, in most purposes, is there to indict because that's why they're brought together, because the, grand, because the prosecutor has information that, it, that that private prosecutor believes there is enough evidence to indict and the grand jury then concurs. So uh, this is what McCullough did not do. This is where we, we uh, has been talked about that the fix was in, where he said he was not going to try and bring an indictment to them, that he was going to bring all of the evidence to the grand jury, and that he was going to let them make their decision. So uh, when the indict when there no indictment came out, and let's you called it the punditry was criticized in the grand jury and saying, you know, these people are doing the best. Yeah, you know, they were doing the best they could. They weren't being led by the prosecutor in any way, shape, or form. The prosecutor made no opinion, did not give them an, an information in terms of what would be relevant to indict a person and, and, and let it go from there and just do that. He did not do that at all. And, you know, McCullough took the easy way out. He could have said, I, there's no, no, not enough evidence here for an indictment. I'm not even going to bring it to a grand jury. But he didn't do that. And, and he didn't bring it to a grand jury to indict anyone. So obviously he had no intention of indicting anyone in the first place. So Officer Wilson was not going to be indicted right from the beginning. Again, from the black community's standpoint, this is Whitey protecting Whitey. Now, uh, the other aspect of it was, is everyone knew, and of course, I don't know if you mentioned it, because I, I watch you quite a bit, but I don't think it was mentioned from on your show at all, that McCullough had been before a grand jury on four other separate occasions where a white police officer or officers had killed a black person or persons, and that there had never been an indictment of those police officers, that all of them had gotten off. And in one particular one, they had talked about... Um, Two officers shot 23 bullets into two, two people who they suspect, suspected being drug dealers. This was over 10 years ago. And they killed both of them. And <laughs> they said that the car was coming at them. And they proved that the car was not in park. You know, so, but then they still didn't indict. So McCullough has a history of this. He has a long record of this. So to say that the grand jury, that we should be criticizing them for the hard work that they do, it's not criticizing them. It's criticizing, see, you try to conflate it to the grand jury when everyone is really criticizing McCullough. Now, the last thing that you brought up, and this is really what gets my goat about you, Billy, is that is, 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 is you, you talk about all, all the punditry and all the punditry and what a terrible job they're doing. They're only there for a paycheck. They're only there, they, you know, they're not doing the, the, the service of the United States. They're not helping out the cause. They're not part of all this. The grand jury made the decision we need to respect it. So you have this guy on named Lewis Butler, who happens to be a black man, and he's speaking and saying that the rig was in. All right, let's, let's, get, let's get some of the facts straight. Lewis Butler is a former prosecutor, has prosecuted over 100 cases. Lewis Butler is currently a law professor at Georgetown University. Now, I don't know much about Georgetown. I don't know where it stands in terms of the best law schools in the country, uh, but it certainly is better than Liberty University Law School, where some of those people in the Bush administration got their, got their degrees from. Uh, I'd say it's a tad bit higher up, uh, way higher up. As a matter of fact, it's in the top 10. I don't know. I'd say top 10, top 25. I wouldn't think it'd be anything less than the top 25, uh, considering the fact that it's right downtown, I believe, in D.C. somewhere. Uh, and I don't know how far it is from the Supreme Court, but the, you know, there's, there's other courts in D.C. So, I mean, it, it's going to get a lot of students. It's going to get a lot of good students. You know, and for you to be hired by Georgetown University, you have to know what you're talking about. And he got up there and he said that he could get an indictment within a day. He said that the rig was in. Who am I going to believe, Billy? You or someone like him? 
And you know, the fact that you even let him say all the stuff that he said, you know, <laughs> let your audience actually hear that was a little bit surprising. So uh, the, uh, MSNBC has had a number of people on, uh, and I know that you disagree with them wholeheartedly, but you know, when a former prosecutor who is now a law professor at Georgetown University, who knows a tremendous amount more about the law than you do, is sitting there saying, this guy took the system and just stroked it to make sure that there was an indictment that the rig was in. I'm going to believe someone like that, and I'm not going to believe you.